Hi everyone, welcome back to the Reclaimed Ranch. Today I am kind of finishing up the projects that I had from my last Goodwill Bins haul. And I saw this little money saving box from Hobby Lobby. And I instantly thought about doing a shadow box with it. So I'm just gonna remove the tags, take it apart. That plastic was already broken, so just came out in a bunch of big chunks. And then I'm going to be painting it in the color Fusions Cashmere. But first I wanna kinda of cover up that money hole. So I'm just gonna use my painter's tape, cover the bottom part of it, and then I'm going to go in with some Dollar Tree Lightweight Spackle. And I'm going to fill that hole. Now typically you'd wanna let it dry probably for at least a few hours, um, but for of course, video sake, I heated it with my gun and kind of sped up the process and then was able to paint over it. But yeah, you definitely wanna make sure that it's completely dry before painting. So here's that cashmere color. And I'm gonna go ahead and go in with two coats of the cashmere. Because this is like the MDF particle board it's not like real wood so it really soaks in that paint so you definitely need to have at least two coats Okay, so here's that decoupage paper. It's called Cottage Core Bouquet. And I do have that as well as the Fusion products on my website if you're interested. But I did go ahead and just take my small artist brush, wet it down with water and ripped the sides off. And then I'm gonna go in with my Fusion's decoupage transfer gel. And I'm gonna do my starter strip. And then we're going to place that decoupage paper on top smooth from like the center out and then lift it up and keep working my way down and that way it's going to eliminate as many wrinkles and bubbles as possible but with this rice paper i really haven't noticed any um as far as trying to even get the bubbles out so as soon as i use my hand and smooth it out it's a done deal which i love and then I always take my heat gun and heat it just in case there is some trapped air underneath that helps release that. And then I'll go back over and do one more coat of my transfer gel to seal it in place. And then I did try to kind of take that cashmere color and blend in towards the flowers a little bit so it doesn't look so out of place. Um, I could have blended the colors out like I have previously in my other videos, but I wanted to just kind of keep this right in the center. And then what I'll do is I will put it back in the box and then I'm going to add some Spanish moss to the bottom and a little bit of some faux boxwood, kind of make a little organic area on the bottom. And you can place birds or maybe a candle or something inside there just to have something fun and decorative, like a little shadow box. You can even add flowers to the bottom if you wanted. Um, I looked at add, adding some lavender, but I wanted to keep it more of a nest feel. So I also added some like little small twigs to it, little branches. And then I placed a bird inside my box. But there's so many different things you can do with this. Okay, and on to the next project. So I got this little box 
inside it's got some velvet um, lining and the outside had a terrible paint job like it's I don't know what kind of paint it is but it's thick it's lumpy bumpy um, a lot of brush strokes so what I did was I just took my razor blade and kind of tried to take down some of the big drip spots and and things that I could with that and then I took a little finger sander and really tried to rough up that um, that paint job so that the fusion would adhere well to that surface because it was very glossy and very slick and so what I had envisioned for this box is I wanted to paint it completely black and then I have some beautiful rose transfers from an IOD transfer and I'll show you how I bring this box back to life with that. It turned out so gorgeous. I can't wait for you guys to see it. And I'm going to go in with my Fusion Cold Black. Now you'll see the minute I started, you can see how like slippery and it makes the the paint really thin. I actually thinned it out with water even just because the thinner the coats you have, the less brush strokes you will you'll see. So, it's always best to just go in with a couple of thin coats. You can see I'm using my Mr. Even to thin it out and um it ended up looking way better with the fusion coats than it did with the the white coat whatever they used there. But it does have this gorgeous detail down on the bottom and I wanted to make sure to bring that back out. So I used the Rub and Buff in the Antique Gold and I just put that around the bottom detail and around the hardware and it just made this piece look so high end. And I had to use two coats of the Fusion and that seemed to be enough to cover it completely. Okay, so this is that IOD transfer redoubt. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> but look at how beautiful those vibrant roses are. If you've never used a transfer before, they come with a, that white backing and you place it where you want it and then you use the little plastic tool to push it down onto your project. Now you don't wanna to push too hard, especially if you've just painted and, and didn't let it dry all the way because it can actually pull your paint up. So you just use a light pressure, and then once I start seeing it go down, I take my finger underneath that plastic part and just use the tool and my finger to remove the plastic vellum on top. And it works really, really well. You definitely wanna make sure to put it right where you want it, because once you put it down, <laughs> you gotta be committed. So I'm just lightly pushing it down, and it'll change a color when when it's adhered to the box so you'll be able to see when it changes and then once you get it down I just lightly pull up on that piece and then you'll want to burnish it in with that and I also use my heat gun on these just quickly not not for a long time because it can ruin it but it does help get the wrinkles and the bubbles out with the heat gun and then I'm just going to use my exacto knife to cut where the opening is Look how gorgeous those reds pop against that black color. It's just so pretty. And of course you can always layer like I'm doing here on top of another transfer. 
it makes it just look more realistic in the design, I think. And um, these IOD transfers are so easy to place. And here's where I use that antique gold rub and buff and I always use a glove when I use this stuff just because it it gets everywhere <laughs> and it dries really quick but I just put a little bit on my finger and then lightly just go across the raised areas you can see I kind of got it up on top there and I'm just going to go in with my coal black and just kind of touch up any details that I didn't want to be the gold but I used it all the way around the whole box on the bottom and brought up that gorgeous detail. And then I also used it on the hardware just to make it all kind of blend in together. I love this rub and buff stuff. It just really makes the details pop and it brings out a more vintage vibe to the piece. It makes it a lot more high-end looking. I don't know what this box was originally used for, but it could be for anything. You can put your jewelry, your watches, you can put little notes or basically anything in it. They're just fun little trinket boxes. And just this last project is a quick and easy flip. I found this little metal butterfly um, hanger at the Goodwill bins and I wasn't real cool on the color but um, I went to this retreat this last weekend on an Annie Sloan paint technique and I just fell in love with this color and so I had to buy a little bit of it and I've never used Annie Sloan before so um, she was the original guru who came up with chalk paint, and um, we even got to FaceTime her, so that was super cool. Got to meet her over FaceTime. Anyway, so I did two coats of this blue. I can't really pronounce it. I don't know <laughs> how to say it, but I think it's Fenska blue. And then um, I did... A clear coat of fusion wax over the top and then I went in with the DIY dark wax and just kind of made it look more old again so um, you can use it indoors you can use it outdoors and so I think it would be really cute to have inside with like a little basket or a little tote or even a towel tea towel hanging off of it I think it would be super cute so let me know what your thoughts are on these projects, and I believe it's the last of my Goodwill Bins haul from the last one I did. So that means I get to go back now and find some new stuff. So that'll be fun. I'll have to figure out when I can do that, and then I will be back here on Friday. I'm not sure what, what I'm going to do yet, but I do have some furniture pieces I need to get done because they're custom jobs and then um, maybe I can make it out to the Goodwill bins get some different projects y'all have a wonderful week and we'll see you back on Friday take care bye